So to begin with, here I have one of those adhesive um, phone knobs, like a little thing that you stick to your phone and it helps you hold on to it. Um, I think this was like $4 online. There will be links to all the different tools and materials used in this video down in the description below. And then you will want to measure it out here. It matches up pretty perfectly with a 40 millimeter glass cabochon, which I think you can get those pretty standard. Um, like this, this is a pretty standard size for these. But um, just be sure to measure your knob before you measure or before you purchase your cabochons. But uh, so it matches up real nice there along the edge. And then I'm going to go ahead and set this off to the side. Now, an option though is if you like the design that's on here, or if you want like um like if you have like a cool holographic sticker or anything like that, you could put that on there and then use something like Art and Glow uh, casting and coating. Um, epoxy resin it's a two-part resin that you mix up and then you can kind of dome the surface to make it look more like super shiny but I found with as much wear and tear as I put my phone through I really prefer the glass <laughs> because it holds up pretty well um, and it just it holds up better to like scratching and things and even through the other one of me these that I've made, even through multiple drops and stuff, the cabochon held up just fine. So if you don't like the glass cabs or you already have some resin on hand, that is a cool alternative. So <laughs> that's what I get for not screwing the cat back on. Um, I'm going to be using, this is actually just any old black nail polish, but I really like this bottle because of the long detail brush that it comes with. Um, so that's Art Deco, and then I just use a, uh, a regular black polish in there. For the pupils, I do prefer something that's heavier pigmented, like a really nice, dense black, so you can get, um, I don't want something that dries ultra thin and looks like light can still come through it. So, and this, my work surface, is just a picture frame with some graph paper in it, and so I'm just getting a whole bunch of pigment loaded onto my brush. My bottle's running a little low. Let me zoom in a bit for you too so you guys can get maybe a better look at what I'm doing. And I'm just really doming up a droplet there on the surface. Now you could do a smooth edged pupil or a textured edge pupil. Just whatever your preference is. There we go. I really like to make just a blob. I'm going to remember to screw the cap on this time. And now you could use a needle or a, uh, a pin or something, but I am using an, a metal awl with a very fine tip. And so I'm just dipping into our pigment and pulling it out. It gives a really nice natural taper. And then I like to wipe the excess off. And to do a smooth edge, I would just grab along the sides here and pull it down and out just to shape out the eye. Or the pupil, sorry. And that way it fills it really nicely and you could let this dry or if you had one of those detail brushes that's like nail polish remover in a little paintbrush you could really clean up the edge but I do personally prefer the feathered edges I know that that is not anatomically correct to anything in the known world but this is a dragon eye so it can look however I want it to <laughs> and so if you're working on your own at home by all means do it however you want it to this is your artwork do it how makes you happy and so I just touch into the mounded up enamel and pull and stretch it out if it starts getting globby on you you may want to clean off your tip and there's the back side of it and there's the front side okay 
And so now I'm going to pick out, I did three because I kind of wanted to warm up and I wanted to be able to pick which one I liked best. And I do think I like this one best. Okay. So I'm going to be very careful to not disturb the pupil. But um, normally I would let it dry all the way. But maybe while that dries for a minute, I will show you guys the colors that I'm going to be working in today. Now you don't have to use this many colors if this is your first eye. I really recommend just using one of these color shift type uh, nail polishes because you can see it has a really, maybe if the camera will catch, it has a really nice like color shift dynamic. And that's, I'll actually go ahead and, but yeah, these are all the colors I'm using. Use whatever colors you like. I'll have their color names and item numbers listed down in the video description below if you want to like exactly replicate this eye. But I guess on this one, I'll come through and we'll do a beginner friendly eye first while that other pupil dries. So what I'm going to do now is where did, there it is, using this same squeaky long skinny paintbrush. I'm just going to come through and sparsely feather the edges, give it a nice little bit of texture. And as we get less and less on the brush, it starts getting more and more feathery, which I kind of like. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more. And I'm just making, this is going to give it a nice taper to the edge, hopefully, like um, give it a little bit more depth. I find that if you use a lighter color towards the center and a darker color towards the edge, it makes the eye oops, look a little deeper. And I'm just a klutz today. That's all right. That's every day, though. Okay. And also, I am doing this near an open window, so it's well ventilated. Normally, if I'm not talking a whole bunch, I'll have my respirator on. Just because sometimes I'll sit and do like, you know, 50 to 100 eyes in a sitting. And you can get a pretty strong headache off of that. <laughs> And so I'm using two different enamels here. They look very, very similar, but this one's much more purple and this one's much more like bluey green. So I'm actually gonna use them both to give a very subtle color shift. But what we're gonna do now from here, and you could let this dry if you want the detail to be more like precise, but I like a nice muddy blend sometimes. So I'm just loading up my brush and I'm gonna start just globbing the paint on over the black. There we go. And then I'm just going to splotch a little bit with the tip, like almost like a stipled effect. that's how the back's looking but then if you flip it over it gives you a really neat color on the front and so then we could let that dry a little bit more if we wanted or we can come through and I like this one is black and blue by Sally Hansen complete salon manicure um yep number 581 black and blue and then this one is by wet and wild fast dry and it is gray's anatomy whatever that means 237c so that way if you're looking for them online i've actually found like walgreens is really excellent for their uh, at least the one in my area is great for nail polish and they have good sales and stuff too so this one, I'm actually taking, and I use the heck out of this color whenever I use it, because it does a really neat color separation effect, especially whenever you use quite a bit of it. So I am, you can see, globbing this on very thick. But 
hopefully by the end of the video, you'll be able to see. Which, for those of you who do not enjoy longer videos, YouTube has a great function where you can actually speed this up. That way you don't have to watch it in real time. But for those of us who are beginners or really like all the details and conversation and stuff, go ahead and feel free to watch it in full speed. But I'm not offended at all if you guys mute me and like put it in like five times fast forward. <laughs> okay. And so now I can just gently kind of spread it all around. But you can see already it's starting to get these really interesting swirls and everything happening. And I'm not going to flip it over right now because this is runny wet nail polish. Um, but but hopefully by the end of the tutorial I'll be able to flip it over and you'll be able to see how cool that effect gets. So I'm just going to set this off to the side. And now, uh, and you can see it's still pretty wet there in the middle, but we can go ahead and get started. So I'm going to begin with, this is a China Glaze Deviantly Daring. Who on earth comes up with these things? Shaking it up. And I'm going to go around and just feather the edge. Rotating my brush to get all the pigment off of it as we go around. And I try to start with a full brush in different spots on the eye as I go around. Okay, next color that I'm going to use is this is OPI Nail Lacquer. Blew my mind. <laughs> Again, shaking it up. Whoop! Dropping some on the table. When that happens, often I will take a nail art brush and just use that as my um, palette. No sense in wasting it. And I let my nail art brushes dry very stiff. That way they act like half all, half paintbrush. This is probably my favorite work area because it's right over my little fairy pond the pump broke while we were away in Phoenix uh, it got like super clogged um, and we weren't home for a week to replace it so there's no water trickling but there's like the leaves rustling and a wind chime and whenever there's nothing going in the garden I'll let the chickens run around so I'll hear them like balk balking favorite workspace Okay, so you can see it used up that nice little drop. And that's how it's coming along. And I wanted to do a little bit of like a sea siren themed dragon eye. So lots of blues and turquoise and different things. So, so this next one is Salon Perfect, my messy bottles, in Tropical Escape. Sure. Shake a shake. So now we'll come through and coming in. I I cut in a little deeper towards the pupil each time with my brush strokes to try to give it. You know, I don't want to just layer all of my color up just at the edge. And I'm doing a little bit of an alternate between the greens and the, like, the greens and blues. You can kind of see. And all of them are kind of bluey or kind of greeny also. Um, but whenever we flip it over, I want there to be that alternation and kind of, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully it'll work out well. <laughs> and so this one is Pure Ice, which is probably one of my favorite brands because I love the bottle size. I feel like the square ones are really easy to open and close. Um, and they're super affordable. And come in like a ton of colors. So again, just very lightly brushing. Oh, there goes the train. And again, I really like to go through and kind of dry brush because it'll stick 
over where there were minute amounts of nail polish from the previous color and it starts to just gently build itself up and I feel like that gives it a really nice natural variation super neat okay and so now from here we do have the option that we could go through and scratch but I'm really liking these colors so far like super duper really liking that texturing that we were able to get from the brush but let's go ahead and scratch it just to see what happens so to do that I'm kind of just going through scraping off a very light amounts the thicker you do your enamel the more goopy this will become and the thicker the lines will be of where you're scraping and you can see whenever it gets kind of loaded up here on the tip, it's going to redeposit back on the surface. So I just use a bit of, it was a bit of trash I just grabbed um, <laughs> to clean off my brush. Or you can let it redeposit. I feel like it gives the iris some really nice um, natural variation because I, I personally have a hard time planning when and where they're going to deposit. And I don't want to scratch off too much, but it just gives a little bit of a layering effect. And if you decide that it's too much right there, you can always come in with like a fingernail. Or just extra scraping. And I feel like that kind of just muddied it around a bit, but meh, this is what happens. <laughs> so now I'm going to start back at the edge, but I'm going to skip the first color and go straight into my next one. And I'm just layering on the very edge. just building up trying as, as best I can to get it settled into the little scrapes that we did then I'm going to come up to the next color and the next color in line just same as before just coming through layering it on and again, I'm being much heavier on the edges this time because I really want to build up into those little crevices that scraping with the awl created. And I feel like that gives us a very nice depth and vibrancy. Okay. And now on to our next color. And again building up just inch and much smaller uh, increases in towards from the edge than what I did last on the first layer. Gosh, it is a beautiful day though. Okay, and now we get to move in to some new colors. Okay, this one is Miracle Gel, which it's called that. It's a gel polish, but it does not require any special light to cure or anything. And this one is Digiteal. <laughs> I like that. Cool. These Miracle Gels are a little bit more expensive, but I really love their heavy pigmentation. Like a little goes a super long way. So now, again, I'm cutting in just a little deeper. Still letting it build up. Gonna get a second layer. And 
There we go. Ooh, squeaky bottle. Let's see how that looks. Very, very subtle. Almost no difference, honestly. But let's go through now with our... This is pure ice in... Get in line. Shake, shake, shake. And then I'm just going to build this in. I'm not even really coming all the way to the edge with this one even. Now this color is... It is a very fine, like, mica glitter suspended in a clear polish. So it's very, very translucent, which is great if you wanted to mount, like, a LED or something behind the eye and have it glow, is light will permeate through this one, as you can see. It gives a little bit of that reflection, but light still comes through really nice, which is fun. I'm going to load up just a little bit more. And here I'm starting to do just a little bit of spotting. And you can do however much or little scratching as you would like. And now I'm actually going to come through with our last color, which is this breezy blue from the Hallie Han Sally Hansen, Hallie Sanson, <laughs> um, uh, Extreme Wear Hard as Nails. I really like this one, and I actually added some pearl pearl-colored pearl Prolex to this one to give it a little bit of a color shift. Or not color shift, but um, just shimmer. And dripping a whole bunch of it on there. Because so I'm going to do a nice thick backing. And now before our next step, I'm actually going to let this dry for a few hours. Or actually, I ought to wait until in the morning to make sure, you know, if I gave it 24 hours. But I am going to put this under a UV lamp which can help even nail polishes that don't require uh, a UV lamp to cure. It can help expedite it. And I'm going to try to carefully flip this over so you can see that's how our eye has come out. And I really like that. So I'm going to let this cure and then our next step, I'm going to show you how to permanently attach it to your knob or whatever these are called. Also, before tomorrow happens, this is how, after a little bit of drying, you can see it's getting a bit of a skin on it, but if I were to touch it, it's still wet underneath. This is how that eye is looking. So you can see by using the two color shifts, it gives you a really interesting effect. And this is way easier than this, at least in a time investment. But there's no reason why instead of backing this with the light blues, I couldn't have done the same gradiated edging and then just used that interesting, you know, multiple color shift for the backdrop. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Very beginner friendly, very easy to get good results. And you don't even really have to do the backing either. <laughs> like if, especially if you're doing like a wire wrap, like a fractal wrap or a chainmail bezel. You don't even need that edging. It'll barely be noticeable once we wrap it. So I changed my mind on this one. I really want a little bit more feathering from the light into the dark colors. So I've let it dry enough that it doesn't stick to my finger. But if I press, it still leaves a fingerprint, if you can see. Right there. So... I'm going to try to not do that too much, but I am going to come through just using the tip of my awl and I'm just doing some light scratching. I'm going to try to not go too much into the pupil or at all if I can manage it. And you can see now that it's dry. I have to press a little harder, scrape a little bit more, but that's okay. And again, as in all things, th use your artistic discretion, use your vision of what you would like, of what you think would be cool, um, and just follow that. So I could have stopped, you know, 
after the first layer really and then just filled it in with a pale blue and that still would have been a pretty cool looking eye but I really like the way that just added layers can add dimension and this is going to be an eye that I have on my personal phone and so I really want it to you know look pretty cool now just in case you scrape a little too much into the into the eye like the uh, iris let me zoom a bit for you. I'm going to come through with our black paint again. Squeaky black paint. And then just kind of goop it in. Into those scratches. And you can actually back just the whole area if you want. So I feel pretty good about that. And so you can see those scratches. Now also, this would be a great opportunity to if I wanted to put an LED light over this or behind it. <clears throat> and we will be having future tutorials on that technique at a later date. Okay, so I've done most of the scratching here. Now I'm just going to do just a few radial scratches coming all the way to the edge. There we go. And I'm going to use the Digiteal. I still think is funny because I am easily amused apparently and just same technique as what we did before just really layering that in very thickly into our scratches And then I'm going to move into our breezy blue with the pearl, pearl like the pearl colored uh, pearl X added. And you can hear the neighbor doing yard work. It is a beautiful day for it, that is for sure. So just filling that in, and I think I'm going to add in another color. So let's go pick one out. Here you can see this is actually how I store my nail polish. These are old wire spools. You can see I need to re-hot glue the cardboard. Um, old wire spools that I just hot glued together, and they're on a uh, Lazy Susan. But I wanted to find a very light blue that's not the... Maybe this one, Splash by Pure Ice. So here we have another light blue. Very shiny metallic. I think that'll look really nice as the backing. And now, just like before, I'm gonna glob this one on pretty thickly. But like a lot of my other shimmery polishes, this one is, um suspended in a clear coat and so I am going to put a spot or two of this one in one and two and then I'm going to use our nail art brush that's pretty janky I try to take care of them but there's only so much use I can get out of a brush it seems and then I'm actually mixing this on our painting, like on the eye. Trying to not get too much mixing in with the black. I should have let that dry a little longer. Would have been ideal. But we can also take it and just let it run on its own. 
before kind of squeegeeing it around with the brush. And so now, just using a broader paintbrush just works so much faster. I didn't want to cross contaminate, but it was taking too long with that little. So there we go. So now I'm going to let this set up as is, and I will come back to this later. Ah, uh, see, we got a bit of blending with the black. Darn it. <laughs> but you could consider that a natural variation. Have it be however you like. You can see there's still some pockets on the back. So I'm going to let this dry up, and then I'm going to show you guys how to touch up whenever it smears like that. So it's getting to be a much more in-depth video than what I originally planned, but man, I do like those additional scratches. Okay. And I can't help but mess with it. I'm gonna try to clean up that black. By just swiping up with the paintbrush. Let me find something to clean this off with. A bit of paper towel. There we go. Cleaning that off the tip. And then maybe if we run this through. Because again, I don't want to just drag more black through it. And so I'm just going to kind of repaint right there. A little bit more enamel dropped in. Check and see where the little lights come through. Because what I'm going to do is whenever this completely dries, I am going to go through and do another thick layer of this just to give it a nice solid backing so that we don't have any little bubbles. <clears throat> but you can see I'll need to add some more scratches there. Oops. And so, let's see. We want them to follow along with the patterns of everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and just do more scratching. Because sometimes, if, I, if it's at the beginning of an eye and I mess up, I'll just, you know, get some nail polish remover, acetone, and like clean up the whole piece. Um, but whenever it's close to the end like this, I really want things to come together. So, yeah, I'm going to come through and add in a spot of this teal just to see what happens. So, <laughs> actually, I'm going to layer that in behind all of it. Because part of it isn't about just spot checking that one area. It's going to be cleaning, you know, cleaning up all of it. Making it all look uniform and like it's cohesive. There we go. And so that's on there nice and thick and I think that's really pretty. And I think that did the trick. Again, I can still notice it just because, but um, it's better than having the black smears, I think. So it is the next day. This is completely dry, which is really nice, and that is how it came out. Honestly, I guess if I didn't know to look for it, I wouldn't notice the little spot, but it's all I can see right now. <laughs> But that's a very natural response, I think, for a lot of different artists. Um, we can often see the flaws in our work, you know, miles beyond what anyone else might perceive. So I'm just going to focus on how shiny it is. And I really like that. <laughs> and that's a reason why you can paint these with acrylic paint. But I would recommend like a metallic or a high gloss. Um, but just the these en enamels for uh, fingernails and model cars are what I have found work best. They just have that super metallic, shiny, wet look. It's so neat. Okay, I'm going to finish looking at that. So I'm going to 
glue this on basically with Mod Podge. <laughs> Sorry, it's I was being spiteful. Um, <laughs> and so you could use a two part epoxy or um, a variety of different glues. I would not recommend hot glue for this, but I've had a lot of success with Mod Podge. So, Mudge Budge. And there's no up or down or anything like that on the uh, the little knob itself. So I'm not going to pay too much attention. And your eye will want to just run right off. So I'm actually going to swipe some paper towels. Because this is messy. <laughs> and I like the Mod Podge. It takes about 24 hours for it to completely set up before you can use it. But after that, like, I've had it stick just for years. Like, it does a really good job, I feel like. Okay, I need more paper towels. <laughs> so I probably could have put on a little less. But I really wanted it to permeate entirely. Like, across the entire back of the eye. And so you can see now, we can squeeze. And we might get a little bit of oozing out the sides. That. Cleaning it off of the little thingy. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to wander off camera. Man, I'm missing yesterday's weather. It's hot today. And so now I'm just going to focus on centering it up and leaving it be. Also, another reason why I do like Mod Pod, Mod, blah, blah, Mod Podge is, as far as I'm aware, it's water-based. Um, it doesn't really have an ingredients list, but I have never had it dissolve the, na the enamels that I use to paint the eye, so I don't have to worry about it squishing around or rehydrating or reactivating the enamel in it, like, being weird or anything. So, I mean, already... I mean, I wouldn't test it, but it's already sticking. So I would wait 24 hours before sticking it on your phone and going. But that is the little knobby thingy on your phone. Um, also, once it's completely dry, I am going to go through with just very carefully, like a cotton pad, just lightly touched with a nail polish remover and clean up our edges. So I will meet y'all back here for the next step. Okay, got some paper towel with nail polish remover. And you want to make sure that it's not going to leak around the back side and disrupt any of your paint job. Now you could also, if you wanted a cleaner edge still, do a circle of beads and a fractal wrap. You could set it in chainmail and do a fractal wrap, but again, I would be afraid that um, if you do too much, it's going to start getting in the way of um, your the effectiveness of this with its intended purpose. So I'm going to leave it with a little bit of, a, of an imperfect edge. And then just go from there. Hey everybody, thanks so much for hanging out with me for this video. I do hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments or ideas, please leave those down below. As well as if you have any requests for future tutorials. Um, I love hearing what you guys would like to see. And then also down in the video description, I have links to all of my different social media, as well as my DeviantArt gallery. So you can actually feel free to browse through there and um, place requests for recreations of older pieces. 
So it's always fun to revisit something that I made about like eight or ten years ago and see how it comes out now just with that different, you know, perspective and stuff. So um, if you enjoy my free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, please consider joining me over on Patreon. Links for that are down below as well. But uh, the more you pledge, the more you get. And I actually have stuff also for folks who don't pledge. You can just have an account and still see some Patreon exclusive content. So that's pretty fun. But I will see y'all in my next video. And until then, happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>